On Wednesday, May 16, Tripola students, teachers, and community members gathered for a ceremonial groundbreaking. The $3.1 million project will upgrade the school district's half a century old building. Construction will begin once students are out on May 22nd. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, we're very excited about this. Um, we can't wait. Um, some of you, or most of you that are here, the seniors probably aren't here, all of you are going to be able to experience a little bit of this project. Um, the, the remodeling part will be done this August. Say your prayers. We're hoping that's going to happen. And uh, then the new part will be a year from now. So if you are a junior, you might not be able to get in the new part unless you come back for the alumni game. If you're any other class, you are going to be a part of this whole project. And remember, the biggest part about this project, this is not Troy Howard's project or the school board's project. This is the project for the community and for the kids. That's what this is all about. And so we're hoping that you guys all take ownership in them. Our first speaker is Mr. Renard. He's been a part of these meetings for about 15 months now. And so Mr. Renard is our mayor of our town, if you did not know that. And so he's going to speak at this point in time. Um, last week, I had the opportunity to meet with eight, two eighth grade classes, and what we were talking about is, is what assets does Tripola already have that would make families want to stay living here or new families come and live here. You know? The school kept that list uh, right out of the bag, that, right out of the bag. Uh, and as I talk with the class, you know, our focus is, is just exactly that. Our over, overriding uh, objective is to try to do things for Tripola that will enhance it and make people that already live here stay here and other people come. And I certainly look at this project as an addition to that asset. So there's nothing more important to the city of Tripola in my mind than this school and this school system and it would be hard for me to ever imagine it not being here. So I really want to thank Troy for letting me uh, make a few comments. And I think, Scott, are you the next man up? Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. I have notes, so I'm not near as, a, as a correct or able ready to go as Mr. Bernard was. So. First off, I'd like to do is introduce the uh, rest of the board of education, ask them to come up. So if you would come up and stand with me, we're all together. We've been a board together. This morning is, is the board of education has six guiding principles that we voted on about five and a half, six years ago. I just want to read two of them and then relate it to how we've, we've, with the projects that we have uh, as a board of education and the administration have walked through the last couple of years. The first one is we utilize the plant and equipment levy and the one cent local option sales tax, the silo, to enhance and create better learning environment by upgrading our school district facilities and technology needs. And the second one is the Board of Education will provide the competitive and rewarding extracurricular activities that increase student opportunities. So the reason we're a board, the reason we're a school is to create opportunities for you all, the, the students of Tripola High, uh, Middle School, High School, and Elementary. So this is for you, as Mr. Heller said. First thing I'd like to do also is, is introduce the, uh, some of the speakers that are here today, unless Mr. Heller wants to do that, but I can do that. Do you? Okay, Mr. Heller's going to introduce it. I'll let him do that. Great. So, again, I read those two guiding principles for you, and I really want to walk through some of the few projects that we've done the last uh, six, eight years. Uh, we started with the preschool, and, and you, you guys have all probably been in it, and many of you probably have taken part in the preschool. Uh, how long? We've had it three or four years now, so some of you in, in the lower elementary have probably used that preschool building. And the thing about that building is age appropriate learning and, and size. Have you ever been in there? The, uh, facility is built for the small kids, small people. So it's kind of fun to walk through that uh, building and see how it uh, is again created for the age appropriate uh, size of children. We did the science rooms, which really brought you full up to date on the science rooms up to the 20th century, 21st century, uh, with the uh, modern larger rooms and with the technology that Mr. Carlson and uh, Mrs. Carlson and Mr. Milius use in those rooms. We also updated the technology rooms on the uh, west wing over there, which, which updated the rooms as well as more computers, both laptops as well as, uh, as desktops, and, and we're able to have more uh, technology rooms available for the students to learn and to bring themselves up into the 21st century. 
as far as this project goes, we're going to touch on the industrial tech area, the shop area, and the art area. Uh, so you'll next summer, next fall, when you come back to school, you'll see a drastic difference on the east wing of the school here, which is basically from the gym, uh, looking into the sun. Uh, and also, we'll have a new exhaust fan that will be part of the art room uh, on the east end of the art room that will help make it safer for all students involved that are uh, working on the projects with the paints or whatever solvents you use in the art room. So that'll be a big part of it uh, that the art room can share as well. Obviously, the gym, locker room, and weight room is going to be uh, this side of you know the, on, this is where we're standing a little bit to my east. And, and this should make us, you know, as spectators more comfortable as we're watching the, the school volleyball or watching uh, basketball and the volleyball and other activities. The locker rooms are obviously going to be more room and, and more comfortable for the athletes that use them. The weight room is going to make us hopefully all schools more competitive and make everybody healthier. So I ask everybody to utilize the facilities we're going to build here and make yourself more competitive and more, and more healthy as you move throughout your lives. Uh, and also, we're not touching the old gymnasium, but by creating the new gym, it's going to allow the fine arts, the music department, to have a, a designated area a longer period of time prior to their, their uh, performances to set up and keep and remain set up so you have more quality practice time. So it will affect the fine arts and music department as well. And obviously the lunch room is the last thing, and that's like we all like, we all like to eat. Uh, behind where we're standing there, we're going to add on to the lunch room. This will all be in an area, an enclosed area with more lunch, lunch room tables. So it'll be more room for you all when you're having lunch to uh, spread out. And, 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 and then also during at basketball games, we'll have areas out here that we can mow around or tell our Coca-Cola people and Federica people. I'd like to end up with just uh, thanking again the, the, the school board for their hours of volunteer service and their, their commitment to Chipola. Um, the employees of the school district and the volunteers that help shape the structure that we're going to be working on. Um, and also, obviously, the last thing I'd like to do is thank the community of Sapporo and Frederica for voting the, the bond issue in 87% approval. So I'd like to say thank the supporters and also like to thank the Novos. They're the ones that keep us on our toes uh, to make sure we're spending the money wisely. So thank you very much for that. And then last but not least, a part in our progress this summer. As you come around the school this summer, you'll see that the east wing will be tore up and, and up inside, and out here will be uh, obviously tore up. And then next year, throughout the entire next year, we're going to have a lot of uh, obstacles to work around, and your normal daily school life will be a lot different next year. So, partner progress. Thank you very much. I do have some things written down also, and uh, I want to thank Mr. Renard, our mayor, and our school board president, Mr. Danner. Um, mine will be short and sweet because Mr. Danner touched on a few of the things I'm talking about, but um, uh, it's been a very exciting 15 months. And uh, yesterday, as Mr. Renard did last week, I got to talk to some eighth grade students and talk about uh, the, the community and the school. And it's, uh, very, it's very cool to see that these eighth graders have some great, great ideas. And uh, it, we, we talked about them, we talked about the cost. I think most of those eighth graders are a little bit uh, surprised at how much things cost. And uh, I think the school board members and myself sometimes are too. So um, Nick hears that a little bit every once in a while. So, But um, we are extremely excited. And again, I want to thank the school board members. They have put in, remember, the school board members, they do not get paid a penny. And they have put in some long, long, long hours. It's all volunteerism. And you just saw all five of them up here. They're, again, they're volunteering to be here today. They all have jobs. They all had to take off. And so, except for Mr. Orff, I guess. <laughs> He's retired. But otherwise, the other four all have jobs, had to take off to be here. And so we have to thank them. They've put in many, 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 many hours. And then some other groups that uh, we're going to talk about. And we had, we started a, something to, called a facility group and that facility group talks about um, all the different things the eighth graders did they talk about what kind of things we need to improve our building and I don't have their names all listed because we started with 45 that broke down to probably about 15 and then after after about a year then it broke down to about seven or eight that were consistently there 
And so, but I do want to, if they would raise their hand of the people that started on the facility group, I don't know if we have a lot of them here. I saw about three, I think. But there's one back there in the back, good job. And so we want to thank them because again, they volunteered their time, 15 months of this. We did this for 15 months and numerous meetings, numerous meetings. Um, the coaching staff, they had to, the coaching staff and teaching staff, they also sat in my office at different times setting up different things. Um, the facility group I just talked about, Spear Financial, if you, Maggie and Larry, if you'd raise your hand, these two people have been helping us with the financial part of the project. And they, uh, they have worked very diligently with us, very nice people. Um, they are my right hand person when I give them a call about the different financial items. Nick Hildebrandt, he is actually, he was one of you. He walked the hallways. He walked the hallways of Chipola. He graduated from Chipola. And now he's the one, he's the guy that draws all these pictures. All these pictures, that's what he did. So he got his education right here at Chipola. And he, and he was able to go into architect. And he, now he works for a structure architect. And so we're very proud of him being a alumni and uh, very proud that we get to work with them. They've done a wonderful job also. Um, Jason, um, Jason from uh, uh, Larson Contracts, and I just met him today. Um, it's kind of ironic because the low bidder came from a town called Lake Mills, Iowa. And my wife is from Lake Mills, Iowa. So that's kind of ironic. He, I just told him that this morning. And so was, we had about seven bidders and they came in as a low bid at 3.1 and then it, we extended that to 3.4. Um, let me see. As Mr. Danner talked about the goals, this is our fourth phase. And he talked a little bit about this too. Uh, before my time, before any of the board members time, we put on this phase right behind you. The library, the sixth grade room, that was done in the late 1990s and early 2000s. And that's been a great addition for us. Then about six years ago, Mr. Uh, Mr. Millius's room and Ms. Mrs. Uh, Carlson's room and uh, Mr. Snyderman's room and uh, Mr. Droste's room were all updated. That was about six years ago. And then about three years ago, we did the preschool over here. And this is our fourth and final phase fourth and final big phase that I'm aware of anyway, unless you guys have some different ideas that I, that I don't know about yet. But this right here will put our, our building, we believe, ready for the 21st century. And we're very excited about that. Here's, here's something I do want to remind you though. I think everybody here, facility group, board members, myself, are extremely, extremely happy and proud of what we think we're going to get. But let's really come down to earth and think about this next statement. I want to remind everyone that even though we are excited and rightfully so, please remember that the value in a school is not its bricks and mortars. However, it is its teachers, school board members, parents, and its administrators working together to build your young mind. But I thought it was a very good quote and I think it's very true. Yes, we want to give you the 21st century facilities, but it doesn't matter if you have a great, great building, if the people inside and the community that's backing us is not doing the right things. And I truly believe we are doing those right things and moving forward with our education in that sense. Last couple of things here, our district mission, we are building upon the rich traditions of the past using innovations of today, preparing students for the challenges of tomorrow. And I think we are going in that direction. I want to thank everyone, the staff, the students, the board, the different groups that we've worked with. Thank you for coming out. I will say this, we are now going to be digging our first hole for this project, the groundbreaking. We had about 30 names, 30 names put their names in the hat. And the winner to put on a white hat Mr. Dan, would you get a white hat over there and then get that, that little shovel for me? Because uh, we have a winner. His name up here. You get to wear a white hat. You're going to be a part of the group and get your picture in the paper with us. How's that Reporting from the Waverly Newspapers, okay, this, so this is Adam Greenwald.